How's it going everyone? Um, welcome to another episode of GT Garage. Um, just thought I'd make a little video. Had some bad rain, bad weather, sorry, over the last probably 12 hours here in the Adelaide Hills. So kind of uh, stuck in the shed for the moment, which is not such a bad thing. Um, my wife and daughter have gone to KI for the weekend, so be a good opportunity to work on the camper and finish it off. However, rain has kind of put a dampener on that. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd give a, do a little bit of video about the um, the day we spent at Jacob Farm. Oh yeah, two weekends ago now. Went there again with my mate Nathan. A bit thundery out here. Um, went to Jacob again with my mate Nathan and uh, myself and my family camped there. Nathan and his family were originally thinking of camping, but were a bit put off that about the possibility of rain. Anyway, because we got the van, we just sent it, and in the end, it didn't rain. That's my dog sneezing, by the way. Um, they didn't stay, but anyway, that's another side story. Um, took the, the camper here for a bit of a run. Now, originally, we were going to go in there. Um, we basically, we booked a campsite basically halfway around the loop track, if anyone's aware of the loop track of Jacob Farm. Um, let's put a picture up in the in a moment. Anyway, we had a fair bit of rain leading up to that weekend. We're actually worried that it might get rained out because the weekend before was rained out. But anyway, they were open. It didn't rain, but everything was very washed out. Loop track was, well, it was a lot trickier than what it has been in the past like a couple of well you could call them rather than puddles there are a couple of bog holes um lots of ruts that the the loop track was cut up a fair bit like some big tires have gone through and and cut the ruts pretty deep um and where the um i think they call it the billabong where the billabong is there's a track that goes through um that was deceptively boggy and rutted out through there um, anyway, we um, went through the Billabong track there and came. We we're coming down the hill, well, from the direction of the admin building, from that direction. And uh, we had a look, as you do. We went and checked out the um, checked out the ruts. It didn't look too deep, and plus the Billabong didn't seem as um, any deeper than last time. Now the uh, here's the thing. Um, we almost got stuck. There's a bit of a, a sharp left-hand turn and quite ruddy, and come over these little bumps and dips, and we got caught up. Um, certainly wasn't the cut the vehicle, but uh, trailer. Something on the trailer was getting caught up, and um, had to reverse it and give it a little bit more um, momentum and um, plus the van was getting a bit stuck on a on the bank on the left hand side one of the uh, brush bars on the on the uh, camper um, explains that it's a bit a bit scratched um, anyway going through there it made it through and the billabong was quite deep but no problem got through after uh, a second dig um, when we got out the other side just had a bit of a look around to see what was getting caught up and it actually wasn't the uh, spring hangers here on the on the leaf springs it was actually the um, where the jockey wheel bolts on it just protrudes about oh, not even an inch below the line of the drawbar and that was just getting caught up on the um on the high side of the ruts um, so you can see there I'll just zoom in a little bit okay so now I am um, where are we here we go I am um, haven't trimmed these bolts off and it's still 
um, axle over spring, which is what we had originally. Um, now, initially I looked at that and I'm like, oh, that might get snagged up. And I thought of inverting or like turning the, the U-bolts upside down. But you know what? That wasn't what was getting caught. And we went through some pretty deep bogs and like to the point of, you can see there on the um, tow bar, or the, the hitch here, like, yeah, that could have been picked up from a departure, but under here, under this bottom lip here, it had actually bottomed out on dirt. And this was actually had a big pile of dirt just caked onto there. So, you know, we hit up some pretty, probably deeper ruts than most people would would take on. And they were muddy. And, yeah, sticky, muddy, sloppy, whatever. And this trailer... It didn't actually get caught up. It was it was only look, yeah, like I said, the um, the drawbar, which was a bit weird. That's what caught us up a bit. It wasn't these spring hangers here. So it makes me think. I mean, I was originally going to consider doing independent suspension, but now that I think of it, no, I don't think I will because it's a lot of extra money for some. For a setup that, you know, when you go a bit remote, you're not guaranteed of being able to have stuff to repair it. And, you know, I've looked at a lot of videos, and notably the, um, have a look at the independent test, well, the independent suspension testing slash comparo between leaf springs that drifted us. Now, I know it's not a direct comparison of, you know, personally I think the the uh, solid axle leaf sprung trailer should have had sh shocks on it to to be to be a reasonable comparison. But have a look at that video because I mean, to be honest with you, other than smoothing out the ride a little bit, I don't really see the outright benefits, anything that really stands out. Because it will add more weight, according to my research, and up to 100 kilos, I see, from some. Um, but yeah, like on the videos, you can see that the um, independent certainly transfers less um, Probably vibrations through the through the cabin and oscillations maybe the better word for it um, and it sort of rides the bumps a bit better which you know you, you can considering you know the wheels can move independently as the as the name states but the thing is though I think what too many people don't think about enough is that the you know again I'm not engineer here I'm not expert this is research that I've done it's the the setup the that a trailer is it's triangular there's three points of contact there's the hitch and then there's the back wheels so in essence you don't get the full benefit of independent suspension from a triangular setup just think about it right now, in my opinion, is it is it worth the extra money for a little bit more supple ride? I mean, I wouldn't go converting a trailer that's leaf sprung to it. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't do that. But if you're building a trailer, I suppose, yeah. You know, this... I've been sort of messing around with leaf, the leaf springs in here, and this used to be 10, 10 leaves on each side. And now I've come back to seven. And I think it rides really nice now. I've got some shocks to go in here to sort of smooth out the ride a bit more. But yeah, I'm still going to keep researching. But I don't know. I think I don't think I'm going to be doing anything more technical than what we did at Jacob Farm, which 
I consider as moderate full driving. And mind you, I dragged this trailer through the ringer and nothing really challenged it a lot. We did a couple of steps up hills and it followed wherever the car went or the vehicle went, no problems. Um, again, guys, this is my personal opinion. I mean, this setup here, if we were remote and something broke in this leaf spring setup, you could basic fix it pretty easily. Whereas if someone, not that, you know, that's the only thing that could happen to independent or break something, but if you broke something independent, usually from what I've seen, you, you'd need a welder. So at this point in time, I don't think that I would go independent. This trailer's starting to get quite heavy in my opinion already. I haven't weighed it yet, but I'm gonna guess around the 800 region, region, sorry, around that. And this was a heavy duty trailer to begin with, and it had 2,500 springs in it. So I've just messed around the springs and I've brought it down quite substantially for it to ride nicer. Um, you can see I've got the, the uh, 33s on there now, which, Again, jacks up the height from the ground because of the you're actually adding height from the tire. And you know, when we went to Jacob, I didn't have these wheels on it. I had smaller ones. Now, at an absolute guess, they're probably like, oh, what are they? Two six five seventy five sixteens. Now, again, I can't remember. Which it could be like a thirty inch diameter. So it's lower than this. And it made it through some pretty challenging stuff. So, yeah, so that's my thoughts. Do you have any opinions or thoughts on independent versus leaf sprung? Rather than, you know, disliking my video or, or you know, disagreeing via the dislike button, type a comment in. Tell me what you think. Convince me to convert mine to uh, independent. I'm open to if someone can convince me, but at this stage, I just keep thinking back to the three points of contact, which would just totally mean that you don't get the full benefit of independent. The whole trailer still has to move. Anyway, starting to get a bit long. That's all for now. Like and subscribe, thanks.